Hey everyone, I am following a literature course by Harvard University, which is available for free on their website. I already got started and I am so excited to proceed and to finish this course. Um, it also comes with tests and I must say I already took my first test and it is not easy at all. I was happy that I took so many notes. I have a special notebook that I use to take notes while listening to the videos and listening to the information. If you decide to follow this course, then I highly recommend getting yourself a notebook and just writing down all the information that they're giving. There were 20 points and I got a 17, which kind of surprised me because it wasn't easy. So let me go over the outline of the course of the syllabus and what we are learning, what we are going to learn. Um, I already got started on the first part, which is about Goethe and the birth of literature. I just went and grabbed my notes because I I want to tell you guys what we've been learning. Um, so it was all about Goethe, about the castle of Weimar, about where he lived, where he um, was working, where he wrote his books. We also learn about his work relation and friendship with Johann Peter Eckermann. I found this first part so so interesting and I cannot wait to learn more. Okay, so what else will I be learning? Um, the second subject is the birth of literature, the epic of Gilgamesh. I had never heard of this piece of literature, so I cannot wait to get familiar with it. Um, and this is also the advised reading, so we will be reading the entire epic. They also recommend the English translation by Andrew George. I don't know yet if I will be buying all of these books. I think I'm gonna take a look at how expensive they are and I don't know, I, I wouldn't mind owning them and then being able to like read it on paper. But of course, I can also use a public domain. The translation that they recommend for the public domain is the one by R. Campbell Thompson. So I'll probably check them out. And then they say that there is a version of some of the Babylonian fragments on Project Gutenberg, which is an excellent website. Oh my god, I can talk. Which is an excellent website um, to visit when you want to read classic literature for free. So yeah, the third part is about Homer and the archaeology of the classical past the odyssey i recently finished homer's iliad so i absolutely don't mind um going on with the odyssey right now i'm very excited to get started so we will read this text as a meditation on cultural dynamics and exploration the advice reading of for this module includes books 5 to 12 of the odyssey and they also strongly encourage us to read books 23 and 24 and they recommend the the English translation by Robert Fagels, which is amazing because one moment I will grab my copy. All right, here is my beautiful box set of the Odyssey, the Aeneid and the Iliad. I am so happy that I already own these translations by Robert Fagels. Next, we are going to talk about the Thousand and One Nights. I have heard so much about this book. I see it referenced in other classic literature novels all the time. I recently finished The Count of Monte Cristo and there were so many references to the Thousand and One Nights and I kind of got excited. It got me excited to read it and I was so happy to see it on the syllabus of this course. And so they say, well, th it's not like the entire book. I think they recommend all kinds of stories from this book. So they're listing all the stories that we have to read. As for translation, they recommend the modern English translation um, by Hussein Hadawi. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Then there's also one that's available on the internet of 1885 translation uh, by the British explorer and Arabist Richard Francis Burton. So I think I'm going to buy myself a copy of the thousand and one nights because i just i want to have it in my library at home next one on the syllabus is the tale of genji and there they recommend all kinds of chapters so i don't think it's the entire book that we have to read they recommend the royal tyler's translation and then there's also a public domain text of edward g sidensticker and there and then they recommend the japanese version but you know 
I don't speak Japanese, so that's not gonna work out. The next one on the syllabus is the first national epic, the Luciads. I had never heard of this one before. I'm so excited to find out what it is about. And this is a book that we're going to read from beginning to ending. Then the next subject is one that I am most excited about in this entire syllabus, and that is Candide by Voltaire. I already read Candide and I love this book so much like if you have not read it yet please please do it's just an amazing little novel and you will get so much out of it and I cannot wait to to go deeper into this work of literature I I really cannot wait I cannot tell you guys how excited I am so they provide a link of the English edition of Candide by William F. Fleming. I actually don't know who translated this one. Let me check. I cannot immediately find it, but I think it's Marine Ginovsky um, who did this translation from French to English. And yeah, of course, they recommend the French edition. I think I'm going to read Candide in French this time with my English copy next to it. So yeah, that'll be fun. The next subject is China and its neighbors, Lu Xun and Eileen Chang, Selected Stories. The advised reading is a full text of Lu Xun's Diary of a Madman. That sounds super interesting. And Sealed Of is also recommended. Then they recommend the English translation of William A. Lyle. There's also a public domain English translation of Diary of a Madman and they provide the link there. And yeah, the original Chinese, which is not gonna happen. <laughs> the next subject we're gonna talk about is Inventing Latin America, George Louis Borges, Ficions, Ficions, I don't know. I'll just pop it on the screen because I cannot pronounce it. Um, so we're going to read The Garden of Forking Pots. They also strongly recommend Pierre Ménard, author of the Quixote, the library of Babel by a name that I cannot pronounce, Orbis Durtius, and the death of the compass. Okay, cannot wait. Next will be from empire to globe, Wol Soyin Soyinka, oh my god, <laughs> death of the king's horsemen. Actually, that kind of rings a bell, I don't know why. Is it a movie? The recommended reading for the week is Death and the King's Horsemen in its entirety. So we're gonna be reading that. Next is the East-West Encounters, Salman Rushdie. I actually know that author, Jampa Lahiri, the interpreter of melodies. So we're gonna read um, parts of Rushdie's East-West, The Prophet's Hair, at the auction of the Ruby Slippers and if time permits, all three of the final set stories, but particularly Shekhov and Zulu. And then from Lahiri's Interpreter of Melodies, a temporary matter, Interpreter of Melodies, and the third and final continent. Okay. Next up, we have Istanbul in or as the world. Orhan Pamuk, my name is Red never heard of it. And we are going to do certain chapters. So the most important ones are the first seven very short chapters, um, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 16, as well as chapters 18, 19, and 20, because they want us to get familiar with the main conflict. Then they want us to read chapter 29 because it contains a detailed description of miniatures and chapter 47. They say that if we want to know how the novel ends, just keep reading. So <laughs> I might as well finish this book. Then in the final week, we will explore world literature in the 21st century. And there is no more advice reading from then on. If you're interested in following this course yourself, I will put a link in the description box. The course is spread over 12 weeks and you have to invest five to seven hours a week. I don't know if you're interested in following my journey, but I will be doing more videos about this course and about my experience with it. If you enjoyed this video, my channel is all about classic literature, so don't forget to subscribe and I really hope to see you next week.